For a very long time, agriculture has been a supportive pillar to rural families in Kenya, providing food, employment opportunities, and meeting their needs. Over time, however, this venture has found itself between a rock and a hard place, owing to the severe effects of climate change and the negative effects of conventional farming methods, monoculture, and overcultivation practiced by many. To help in soil conservation, the Kenyan-based non-governmental organization Participatory Approaches for Integrated Development, PAFID, in coordination with the Farm to Market Alliance, FTMA, and various county governments, has been promoting climate-smart and resilient farming through conservation agriculture. The aim is to increase food security, reach farmers with new technologies through extension, and reduce the negative effects of conventional farming methods within 17 counties across Kenya. With Parfind, we have collaborated in the conservation agriculture, which is a very important aspect when it comes to the, the climate, when it comes to the climate aspect, because nowadays we receive little info compared to the past years. Through the collaboration, they have assisted our farmers to receive the services with his, instead of waiting until the time when the agricultural officer will be available. In conservation agriculture, farmers are encouraged to embrace three principles, minimum soil disturbance, permanent soil cover, and crop rotation. These techniques help in maintaining organic matter to ensure that the capacity of these soils to hold water remains high, enabling crops to continue growing even during the dry season. For minimal soil disturbance, PAFID has been discouraging the turning of soil and advocating for the use of the chisel plow or tractor drum reapers. These implements only cut through the soil, breaking the hard pan and creating a water reservoir on the hard and uncultivated portions. What we see uh, in this farm is what we call minimum tillage. And minimum tillage is basically minimum soil disturbance. You will only open up the soil for the purposes of seed placement and fertilizer placement and there's no need of turning and churning the soil as that leads to our soils being loose and that encourages soil erosion. Tulikuwa tunasumbua mchanga. Tunalima tukisumbua mchanga, tunasumbua mpaka wale wandudu ambao ni wa manufaa kwa mchanga na rutuba ya mchanga tuna tunaisumbua. Sasa wakati Perfect alikuja through FTMA alitufunza hiyo maneno ya minimum tillage tumechimbia wakulima hiyo mitaro this season 52 acres na wale ambao wame wamefanya hiyo conservation agriculture au wakulima wamefurahi sababu mazao yao kwa shamba ukiangalia unaona ya kwamba inaendelea kunawiri in minimum tillage what we say is that the business of of conservation agriculture is all in the depth achieved so if a farmer is not able to achieve the depth uh, even if, uh, I mean, there won't be any difference from a farmer who is doing conventional agriculture and a farmer who is doing conservation agriculture. Because we are restricting tillage to where the seeds or the fertilizer will be, will be laid, uh, we now have other benefits that come about by doing so. The first benefit, of course, it is less costly because we are not stealing all the land as we usually do in conventional farming. We only restricting tillage to around 15% of your overall uh, land. So it becomes cheaper in terms of time and fuel consumed. It is a faster operation. It is also an operation that can be done during the dry season. Upon planting along the reap lines created, Parfeed further discourages the exposure of these soils to direct sunlight and encourages crop cover through application of crop residue of previous crops or growing cover crops. Bereni, kama ikiwa ni mahindi, tulikuwa tunakata mahindi, tunapereka yote kwa ngombe. Tunaacha mchanga bila rutuba. Lakini wakati Parfit yalikuja through FTMA, tumefunzwa ya kwamba tusikuwe tunachukua hiyo majani yote, tunaperekea ngombe. Sababu hata hile mchua, ikikosa chakura huko kwa shamba, itatufuata mpaka nyumbani na itakura hata, itakura hata nyumba zetu. Once soil is covered with, uh, with residue from maybe a previous crop, 
the rate of evaporation is controlled. There are microorganisms and other organisms that we can even see with our eyes like termites that thrive in such a soil and they condition the soil. They break this uh, organic matter back into the elements that form the soil and, and you find that such a soil is very fertile and can keep uh, producing uh, crops profitably for the farmer. If you visit most farms in Kenya today, farmers practice traditional farming through the growing of the same crop season in, season out, and at times having the lands cultivated when the climate isn't favorable. These farming methods have led to them receiving substantially low yields from farms that ought to give them better returns. Due to these traditional methods, soils get degraded, become infertile, and whenever it rains, even the little fertile soil gets carried away through erosion because of being unprotected. A very important component of building soil health and breaking the disease cycle is changing the cropping systems which involves moving away from a monoculture to crop diversification through crop rotation. Bereni, sisi tulikuwa tunapanda mumia moja for so long kwa miaka mingi mpaka hiyo mumia inatumia ile ya rutuba iko hapo inamaliza na masao inaenda inaenda chini lakini wakati tumeanza kufanya crop rotation tumeanza kuona mabadiliko kwa mashamba yetu na hata kwa masao so the beauty about crop rotation and here we are talking about rotating maybe cereals and legumes we are able to restore some kind of ba uh, nutritional balance because whatever nitrogen was depleted by the maize is replaced by the, the beans. In sustainably promoting these conservation agriculture principles, Parfid uses lead farmers, famously known as Farmer Service Centers or FSCs. These Farmer Service Centers assist in disseminating these technologies to the farmers that they represent using practical demonstration farms. Through this approach, more and more farmers are adopting these practices in their farms, ultimately changing their lives. I think 2011, I so we took about 2011, 2012, we began to work with farmers and farmers. We took 2012, we were able to do training for farmers. This is the year of the year. We were able to do training. And we were able to do a lot of work with farmers. So we were able to do a lot of work with farmers. We were able to do a lot of work with farmers. We were able to do a lot of work with farmers. Even if we were able to do a lot of work with farmers, we were able to do a lot of work with farmers. Sasa tukaanza kupanuka. Mpaka leo tumefanuka zaidi. Mambo ya sii hapa inajulikana sana. Watu wanajua mambo ya basin, wanajua mambo ya reprints, wanajua najua mambo hii hata ya kupiga mandawa. Uh, within this program of uh, FTMA in Tharaka and Meru, already farmers they have seen the benefits because like most in the lower part of Meru and Tharaka is very dry and the change of conservation and the conventional is widely seen. So after that farmer seen it, it's easier for that farmer now to adopt. Kabra siye kukuja, tulikuwa tunarima hii ukulima wakawinda. Wakati uo, mtu wakibuna mingi, ilikuwa mtu wanabuna kama ikamoja nguni ya saba, ikizindi sana kumi. Wakati tulingiara na mambo ya siye tulianzia 2014 yapa. Tangu tuanzie, mabuna imeanza ikipanda. Kama 2014 ile shamba nikuwa na buna ikagumi, iliingia direct kwa 19 bucks. Ilienza ikipanda. Na bile nikuwa na mchanga inaenda. Saa hii hata tukingia kwa shamba, uwezi pata tumitaro hile ya maji, mekatakato na maji, uwezi pata kitu ya inayu. Mara ya kwanza tulikuwa na ika 17 kwa sababu wakulima wakuwa na hiyo ufahamu. Mara ya pili this season tuko na 52 acres. 
na season tunaenda kulingana na vyenye wakulima sasa wame, wameonelea uzuri wa conservation na agriculture sasa mimi naona sasa tunaweza enda mia na kitu wakulima tunaweza enda eka mia moja na kitu tulikuwa tunafanda viasi lakini unajua viasi kabla wakati tulikuwa tunapanda haikuwa sawa ulikuwa unakata lines unajua tulikuwa tunafanya kasi kama tatu hivi lakini ifafe ndi mekuja kuturainishia kasi. Njoro, South County, ni eri ambayo iko na jua upande wa chini. Na ikiwa na jua, ile mvua kidogo ambayo inakuja kwa watu wa siye, wanaweza kupata mazao kwa sababu, we used to uh, retain water. Tumeweka, uh, zile mitalo zetu zimeweka maji, hatufungui mchanga sana, tunafanya mochin and ABC, ya yeah, na haya mengine yote. So, wale wakulima ambao wameingia kwa siye, pia hawa hawaski kubanduka kutoka kwa siye ni kwa sababu wameweza kupata production ambayo imekuja juu it is about about 5 years sasa nimetumia siye na siwezi kutumia ukulima mwingine because haina hasara one na pia niko na time nikipanda nikipiga dawa shamba nikate mitaro niweke mahindi zangu nimeondokea so i go for my other businesses what we are trying to see for its sustainability is uh, we are trying to uh, serious look on the partnerships. We are trying to see how also the farmers can also uh, feel. Uh, farmers should also also gain them for the, whole, the purpose of ownership of the programs, so that even if the profit phases out, what we have started with the farmers should continue. But now there is the ultimate. Uh, practice that we will make a farmer a full-fledged conservation agriculture farmer and this is the introduction of agroforestry trees on the farm so it's like a four-step ladder the very basic step is minimum tillage the second step is uh, residue retention the third step is crop rotation then the ultimate step is agroforestry with inclusion of agroforestry on the farm, you now have a whole or a complete ecosystem on the farm. When the soil system is working properly, capturing and storing moisture and crop diseases are well managed, crops grow better, healthier, are resilient to diseases and ultimately produce more yields. With the growing adoption of conservation agriculture, farmers from the counties of Meru, Tarakanithi, Nyandarwa, Elgeo Marakwet and Nakuru have a reason to smile. Asante. Yeah. <laughs>